In this video, we will give you a short introduction to the internet. That is an internet, the internet in a nutshell. But first, let's take a look at where we were. We looked at our microcontrollers communicating with each other. This was module 11. In module 11, we saw how two microcontrollers can communicate with each other using UART. So this was UART, let's say, 1, UART 1, and they were using serial communication. This was our chat room where we sent colors to each other in our offices. Yes, and this is what is called a point-to-point -point communication because there's only two endpoints and they talk to each other. Now, these two endpoints could actually span a long distance. Ooh. If I had these two microcontrollers in two different buildings, say, then I could go up to 500 meters. But Ramesh, we're going to need some hardware boosting to make that happen. Yes. The boosting would be done by using a driver. Now, uh, the logical extension to this is, say I want two microcontrollers talking to each other for some purpose. Maybe they're exchanging weather information or light information like we did in, uh, for communication. Maybe this microcontroller wants to talk to another microcontroller. So now, these guys are using up one UART. These guys are using up another UART because they need physical communication because it's point to point. Now, as we see, very soon we will want another microcontroller. Maybe this guy wants to talk to this guy also. So this is a UART and UART here. Maybe there's a fourth microcontroller which wants to talk to this, wants to talk to this, as well as wants to talk to this. Whoa. This uses up another set of my UARTs. So UART 3 here, UART 3 here, UART 3 here, and UART 1, UART 2, UART 3 here. So very soon we'll notice that if I have n nodes like this, and if they have to be connected, all of them have to be connected to each other, we will need n times n minus 1 by 2 links. Ah, so if n is 4, we see that there are 6 links here. If n is 4, then this value, the number of links, is going to become 6. But for large n, this becomes impractical. So we say that this is an order n square problem. Problem, right? So let's see. What how, are we going to do? Yeah, let's see how the early designers coped with this problem. One of the first solutions to this problem was to think of connecting our nodes, our microcontrollers, if you will, on a ring like this. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that everybody is connected to the same ring. There's a tap, and this is what is called a token ring protocol. How do you know who's who? But the only confusion, as John is rightly pointing out, is it's not a point-to-point -point anymore. They're all sitting on this. So they all need a hardware address, uh -huh. an identity, if you will. And so they all have a unique ID, ID 1, ID 2, ID 3, and they take turns. Uh -huh. That is, there is a token that's moving along. Whoever gets the token gets to communicate. So the token is handed, handed between them, and whoever holds the token gets to communicate for a certain amount of time, and then yields the token to the next one. So this is what is a standard, which is an 802.5 standard, or the token ring standard. John, do you see a problem with this? Yes, what if just two computers are talking to each other? Uh, aren't you wasting a lot of time? Yeah, so they have to wait for their turn, even though the others don't have anything to communicate. The token still has to make its way around. So that's a problem with this. So one of the alternatives that was proposed was a different protocol where they're all again tapping into the same network as before, except they, they communicate at will. Communicate 
at will, which means that you simply go ahead and put your request, your communication onto the, onto the medium and hope that nobody else is communicating. If nobody else is communicating, then your, your communication is going to go through. If somebody else also senses it to be idle and they try to communicate, then there will be a collision. So this is mm -hmm. called a carrier sense multiple access protocol. This is, stands for CSMA. And because it detects a collision, it's called collision detection. So that is you detect if there's a collision. If there's a collision, then you back off and try again. So this is what is the most popular technology for, for communication that actually made the internet possible called the ethernet. So this uses a hardware cable to connect up your computers. Yes, and this is called the 802.3 standard. Yeah. But what if I don't want to use wires? Can I connect it up without the wires? Yeah, that would be the logical next step. Uh, one of the things that we can do is we can say, how about lose the cable and have each of them have a radio capability of radio communication. So they all use a certain frequency. In fact, they all use microwave frequencies. Let's say microwave frequency range of uh, something between uh, 2.5 gigahertz and above to some range. And this is what gave us our 802.11 suite of protocols, what we call as Wi-Fi and also Bluetooth. So in this module, we'll show you how your microcontroller can be hooked up with a booster, which is a C. 3100, which has the radio communication on it and also had the software, the firmware to do everything as far as this protocol is concerned. All right. But what if I want to go bigger? So, yeah, that is going to be an interesting problem. So, I'm assuming what John means yes, is more. More. That is, I. I have a network in my, in my organization. There's another network somewhere else. There's another network, and these networks are cropping up because everybody wants to now communicate with their devices. So these are all devices that are communicating here, and these are all devices communicating here. And now we very soon want to be able to make these independent networks, we call this a local area network, a local area network. We would want these local area networks to talk to each other. So we need some sort of an infrastructure to do that. This network of networks is called our internet. Uh -huh. So the internet is nothing but an interconnection of these networks, which means for this to happen, this, this infrastructure has to have the ability to support that. Ah. So here we've shown you the basic idea of how the internet evolved, but we still have a lot of problems to solve. Now what's our next problem we should look at? The first problem we have to look at is addressing. Ah. Okay, so in the next video, we'll show you how one network can discover the addresses, the hardware addresses of another network. Okay.